Right, Nigel, on to the right -hand side of the combine and show us some of your tricks that you've got up your sleeve on this side. Well, the one thing that's that's here is actually what is not here. Because right. what we've actually, it, sound, it sounds a little bit Dutch, but what we've done is we've actually taken away all the drive system that used to drive the uh, rotary separator and the straw flow beater on the old combine. So what is behind the panel there is not there. So hence all the gaps up here. <laughs> yeah, gap is good. Gap is simple. Gap is lack of drive. Gap is, in terms of a, a benefit to the owner and the operator of the machine, uh, lower cost of ownership because there's nothing there to go wrong, nothing there to adjust, nothing there to service. So around this side of the machine, it's, it's the, the one thing that most people comment on around here is simply the lack of anything going on. But we do have some, some clever bits going on around here to, uh, to start with. What about that? <laughs> what about that? Well, there we go. This is, we've mentioned this already, this is the, the smart sieve. So this is the actuator that operates the smart sieve system. So there's a little bit of software up in the cab that it tells this ram how far to go. But what it does, the way that that ram moves, it moves this pivot point backwards and forwards. So if I've got a, if I've got a bar here that's, got, that's, uh, that's attached to the sieve, if I have it in the central position where he is at the minute, we move the sieves backwards and forwards, they, they run in a straight line. If I move the actuator forward and then try moving the sieves backwards and forwards, what happens is it moves to your, uh, to your left hand side. If I move it the other way, it goes to your right hand side. And that's the way that this sidewards movement of the sieve is introduced into the, or the, or the movement is introduced onto the sieve system. So it's just all about linkages. All about linkages. <laughs> nice. Uh, and in terms of grain handling on this side, what we have on grain handling, we've got our clean grain elevator on this side, and we use exactly the same yield monitoring system that we use on CR. So what we've got here is a continual flow moisture meter. So uh, grain leaks back as it goes up the clean grain elevator. Uh, there's a fin in there, it takes a reading, uh, and then it will empty the, uh, the, the receptacle there out, and then the whole thing will start again. So it continually monitors the uh, the, the, the grain moisture all the way through the tank. It doesn't just do one sample uh, in a tank load. So it gives you a much better picture of what's actually going on inside the field. At the top of this clean grain elevator here where it transfers over into the bubble up auger, that is where we have a mass flow sensor. So what that mass flow sensor does is as the crop drops between the two, it drops onto the mass flow sensor and it weighs it. And the good thing about the mass flow sensor is a tonne of wheat is the same weight as a tonne of barley, as a tonne of rape, as a tonne of feathers, as a tonne of oats. Yeah. Everything, a tonne is a tonne is a tonne. So we don't have to do continual um, specific weight calibrations for, for the crops throughout the day. That's all, that's all gone, that's history. Um, so this system, it enables you to be accurate. People are basing some fundamental farming decisions on the data that they're getting from that sensor. And if you put rubbish into the variable rate fertilizer equation, for example, you get rubbish out. You don't get accurate uh, deployment of your fertilizer throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the farm. And what sort of accuracy are we talking on that? Um, depending on how you calibrate it in the first instance, if you take the time to calibrate it in the first instance, we're talking sub 1%. Okay, and uh, while we're on this side, in the intro we mentioned the size of the grain tank on this combine. What about sort of unloading rates and things like that? The unloading rate on this combine is approximately 110 litres a second. Uh, so if you haven't got the trailer underneath the spout, you're going to lose two, 200 weight of pheasant. Someone's going to be shoveling somewhere. Some, yeah, and it's usually the gamekeeper because those buggers don't, <laughs> never miss a trick when it comes to, uh, comes to picking up fallen grain. Um, but it, for, for the size of the combine, for the size of the tank, it does mean that we can empty the whole tank out in barely 90 seconds. Okay. Uh, and in terms of unloading auger lengths, uh, yes. what options have you got in that department? We have got quite a few. Uh, we have got the 4.5, 5.5, 6.4, and then by changing the spout at the end of the tube, we can actually get another 0.9 metres on the, on the spout. So what we can do, whether we've got a, a 25 foot table, 28, or 30, we can actually get you straight over the top of the swap with that. So while I've been standing here, this little yellow handle has just sort of caught the corner of my eye. What's that all about? <laughs> that little yellow handle, that is one of the tricks behind this combine. What we have there, that is the handle that operates the OptiThresh system. This is our variable geometry concave. Very simple, it's only two positions, up for up, so that will give us the maximum 121 degrees of wrap angle, down for down, that will give us the 82 degrees where we, say, say for example, we, we, we've got straw, brittle, we want to keep the straw, 
um, and that way we can actually maintain the, the integrity of the straw as it goes through the machine. Okay, and it's simple again.